Hello and welcome to Boobs by your favorite plastic surgery show. As you can see, I'm doing a nice little video today about the real um, breast augmentation surgery. While I am um, injecting the local anesthetic, let me just give you a go through a little bit of technicalities. So first, please uh, follow me on my Instagram account and follow me on um, YouTube so you can be informed when the, the, the new events are taking place, when the live show is on. Um, so as I said before, we are doing the live surgery today. Um, I hope you're not offended by uh, some of these pictures. I limited the video to 18 plus, so hopefully no kids around. Um, this is, of course, completely educational, so um, it should be fine also by YouTube standards. Um, as you can see here, uh, we are in our operating room um, doing the, I mean, starting with the uh, breast augmentation uh, with one of our beautiful, beautiful um, uh, patients. Um, we, it's a, quite a simple procedure and it's just the right length, the whole procedure, so I can explain you a little bit about uh, how uh, is, it is being done, um, what we are doing and uh, how everything is taking place. Uh, normal breast augmentation like this one takes about 25 minutes. Um, as you can see now, after injecting everything um, thoroughly with local anesthetic, uh, we are doing the first incision, so we can enter the pocket where we will place the implants. Um, in this particular case, we are doing the incision in the inframammary fold, so the, 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 the scar will remain hidden below the breast, in the, in the fold below the breast. Uh, using some cautery, this is a cotter, this is a, like an electric knife, it helps uh, cut through the tissues and also stop the bleeding. As you will see through the procedure, there, this procedure is really bloodless. There is a minimal loss of blood, practically nothing. So it's, um, um, it should not uh, make any patient anemic uh, and the, in the complications in this uh, way are extremely rare, almost never happening. So um, using the, well, that, that, that's obviously me. There's my assistant. Um, and the nurse. Um, so now using the hook, I elevated the skin and I am continuing the pocket dissection in the, in the, um, under the muscle. Um, yeah, my assistant is moving away the light so we can better see the, the, the tissues, the muscle and everything. Now, um, I am um, just on the border of the muscle making the pocket so, and using the, you can see the, the forceps, uh, this is electrical forceps that is used to, to stop the bleedings, the, the bleeders, the small veins that are bleeding. It's minimal, but we use it so, so that our operating field is very clean, um, no blood whatsoever. Um, as you can see, we are completely dressed in the uh, operating gowns, uh, this is an operation, or most of our operations, of course, um, needs to be 100% sterile, which means that everything is washed by alcohol, um, we, um, everything is sterile, and uh, there is, so there is absolutely no contamination with bacteria. Uh, we do not want bacterial contamination uh, during surgery, of course, to prevent, uh, to prevent um, any com I mean, complications, like um, in this case, an infection or a late complication of capsular contraction, about which we will speak, I think, tomorrow. So I'm, now I'm using my finger to make the pocket bigger. Um, and uh, see, checking everything is nice and uh, nice and, and in the right shape and the right form. So the, the implant will fit perfectly. The pocket that we prepare, uh, like I said before, it's under the muscle or um, as I explained also um, yesterday, it's actually dual plane, which, which means that part of the implant is uh, below the muscle, uh, the upper part, the lower part is under the skin or the gland. So it's called the, um, submuscular or subpectoral or dual plane. It's the same thing, more or less. So again, a little bit of uh, coagulation, uh, stopping the bleeding. And I think this site is almost ready for an implant. Um, well, uh, to let me just explain some other um, th things uh, 
that happened before um, entering the operating room because now we have a few minutes of time. So a patient, when uh, she comes to the to our clinic, is of course um, um, uh, welcomed into the into the room where she talks to the surgeon one once more to go through the plan so that they um, and of course the surgeon to draw to, to do the markings uh, what I mean just as the procedure was planned. Um, at this at this time, there is also a chance to do some you know, some final adjustments of the surgery. Uh, many patients uh, ask to, to do it a little bit more than we were uh, we were discussing uh, before. And it's usually not a problem because most of the implants are always um, in the house. So also bigger, smaller, not a problem. We can go a little bit uh, uh, big, bigger, we can go a little bit smaller. Um, this is also the time to speak uh, to the um, anesthesiologist. Um, he or she will, will ask the patient about health condition one more time, uh, ask about any previous experiences with uh, anesthesia, drugs they take, um, and of course, check the, the lab work. So the um, blood exams that the patient did before surgery. Um, <clears throat> so if everything's fine, if everything fits, um, the patient is... Um, the patient is uh, given uh, the, some drugs, uh, some medicine for to calm her down, and some other medicine against uh, thick, sickness, about, against uh, vomiting. Um, the, um, of course, a patient uh, before coming to the clinic on that morning is not allowed to eat or drink anything. Um, there some sips of water or clear tea are allowed, so a little bit of water is fine, but. Um, not, I mean, she should eat nothing, completely nothing. So, um, so how we are still on this side, still okay, finishing this pocket on the left side. But I mean, I think that according to the practice, usual practice, they should be, it should be done. Um, now, um, as you can see, um, I'm injecting more local anesthetic. Um, I find that really, really important to use a lot of local to prevent uh, post-operative pain. The, um, this, uh, this is not a normal <coughs> uh, local anesthetic that is being used for, for skin or other small procedures. This is a long-term uh, local anesthetic that works for one day even more. So uh, for the first day, the patient is covered uh, with local anesthetic, plus, of course, we, we give them um, in, in um, painkillers in the, into the vein, infusion, um, stronger painkillers, of course. So one side is done. Now we do the same thing on the right side. Um, again, as you can see, skin incision. Um, and then continuing work under the skin, through the skin, uh, using uh, uh, electro uh, cautery. Uh, this is the electro cautery knife. Uh, my assistant is helping me with the hook, so um, I can see better and, of course, see what what uh, I am what I'm, I'm doing. Um, and so um, now we are at about half of the procedure. This is a more or less ten minutes work, and we will go on uh, with the with the electro cautery like this one, and uh, the sec the pocket I as I explained before. Um, so, so the patient, uh, as I already said, uh, when coming to the clinic in the morning, should not eat or um, drink anything. We, are, we also ask them to, lie, uh, to wear light clothes. Why light clothes? Because um, so it, it's perfect if they, they zip in front to remove them uh, with ease and also to put them on back after surgery without um, putting anything over the head. Um, it's, uh, it's very difficult to raise the hands after this type of surgery. Of course, the, the, the muscle is injured during this procedure and to, to raise the hand is quite, quite difficult or, or almost impossible in the first week. Uh, we will speak about recovery tomorrow. So um, on, the, on the day of surgery, um, light clothes, um, nothing to eat and of course prepared also at home we we suggest the patient to that they prepare um, some light meals so when they get home um, they have some food prepared they don't they don't need to do 
uh, too much work with their hands. Or if their partner is there, I mean, he uh, or she will help with those activities. Um, well, still on the right side, um, dissecting, you can see also partially with fingers. Um, in surgery, fingers are used a lot because you can feel really well what you're doing. Um, you are not, um, so you're not um, um, injuring some nerves, uh, which can be injured in this uh, in the lateral part of the breast, um, especially uh, when doing the pocket um, in the area up towards the armpit here laterally. The nerves for the breast for the sensation come from here from the lateral part. So when we are doing this, um, and in, in this moment we are stretching those nerves. That's why it's better to use fingers because under the finger you can feel the nerve um, and you don't injure it. Uh, if if you, we would use a scalpel or, or electric uh, knife, the nerves could get injured. So the, um, the, the, the nerves in this lateral part, as I said before, are, are even though they're not cut, they are quite commonly injured or stretched. You know, because to make pocket for an implant, we have to stretch the nerves and that does injure them. That's why there are quite a, quite common um, some, some um, temporary nerve problems like um, girls say that they have too much sensibility on, on the nipple or that they lose or they, sometimes they lose sensibility on the nipple or they have a feeling like tingling, you know, like uh, little ants or or burning pain, um, all sorts of strange feelings because the nerve is like a cable and if it's injured, it will just send wrong information. And, um, and this is very, very true in these cases. Uh, mostly in like 90% plus cases, the, the innervation, so the nerves get better, they heal and they do not make any problems um, anymore um, um, on long term. Sometimes this can take even up to one year but usually it settles in three months, three to six months. Long-term um, nerve um, defects or nerve um, 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 sensation defects are quite, quite, quite rare. I mean, they, if, if the technique is nice, they, they do not uh, um, happen very often, maybe a few percent. So uh, finishing this uh, right side, there is a little bit of blood, but nothing much. Um, in this particular case, uh, we will we, we are using a mentor implant, moderate plus profile, round implant of 275 milliliters. This is a, this is a very active uh, girl. She does a lot of uh, sports, a lot of fitness, and she preferred not to do the breast too big. Um, and I think the, the choice was perfect for her body. Um, it did, uh, of course, um, augment the breast, make it make it made it bigger, but uh, still, uh, it's not too much, uh, and uh, she can do sports and all activities without any problems. Now she's about two months after surgery. Um, soon we will start preparing the implant to insert it. Um, as you can see, also the assistant has not much work during this <laughs> procedure. Um, this is a, is a, and it's a very, I mean, it's a very routine procedure. So um, everybody who is involved uh, in in this operation, uh, assistant and me, you know, we know exactly what the next step is. So it's like a, it's like a dan dance more or less. So uh, we know the moves, uh, we know the rhythm, and we just go through it. And that's why after you know doing many and many hundreds of, of such operations, of course, the it gets easier and easier and faster and faster and the results, of course, better and better. So uh, it, as you can see, uh, my assistant checked on the left side. Now I'm checking on the right side. Um, the pocket, if it's clean, no, no, absolutely dry, no bleeding. Um, and now we will be uh -huh, some more bitter, but some more bleeding. But okay, now we will be um, irrigating the pocket. So we use a, a solution with antibiotic to clean. To, to drain the, the everything that could be inside the pocket, even though it's sterile, we still do it just to be you know 100% sure not to have really not to have any any um, complication afterwards. This is you know checking the the size of the pockets if it's symmetrical, left and right. Uh, you can see here I'm uh, just a little bit more um, um, expanding the pocket and one final check. 
and my assistant is already uh, uh, injecting the irrigation. Now I'm doing the same. This is a, a funny movement, but it's it's meant to spread the liquid inside the whole pocket and, and irrigate everything. So the whole pocket is clean, and now uh, we will... Um, squeeze out this excess fluid and th this this way the pocket from the inside is prepared for the implant now um, i will change the gloves um, as you can see i'm changing the gloves uh, even though the gloves are of course sterile we change them uh, um, um, take new ones to be absolutely sure there is zero bacteria or other uh, microorganisms on our hands um, now the, my assistant will also, as you will see, clean the clean the skin with some iodine solution. Iodine solution will okay first. Okay, of course, my gloves. Yeah, you know, this video has always looked like we are hurrying somewhere, but it is just normal, uh, uh, normal action, normal way how we do it. It looks like we are just in in some rush, but it's just, I mean during the procedure it doesn't seem that fast it's just it's just normal so now he's using iodine uh, to clean the skin to also remove any um, possible bacteria from the skin so sometimes you see this this type of color on the skin it's not blood this is iodine uh, it's made to for to, to sterilize the skin and as you could as you could see during the procedure there was absolutely no blood so this is a really really clean clean operation. Now I, I took the implant, I, I washed it some more, and now uh, my assistant is using these hooks to open the pocket, and now I'm inserting the implant. Um, like I said, it's in the inframammary, infra, um, inframammary incision, submuscular pocket, and now using my, my fingers, I will you know uh, position it so it's in the perfect position. The implant uh, has a special, uh, it has a circle on the bottom, so you can feel it with your finger where it's being positioned. So you cannot miss or you know fold it or something, and you cannot turn it upside down. So this is quite secure. And also the pocket that we did before, the size of the pocket is very very tight, so the um, the implant fits you know very snug, very tight. It cannot move up or down. It, it was a bigger problem. Uh, years ago, when we were using subglandular or subskin pockets, uh, those were prone to much more implant movement. Uh, submuscular is much more stable uh, result, and it's, I mean, I have never seen an uh, um, implant uh, migrating towards the, the, the axilla or I don't know where. It's extremely, extremely rare because the pocket that we do is so fit. So we are more or less done. Um, now we are checking uh, the, the symmetry, the result. Um, if everything is fine, um, and uh, my assistant is preparing the stitches, I um, so I will stitch. Uh, I prepare some deep stitches. These are these are the stitches that hold the bottom part of the implant, so it cannot migrate down. This is the biggest fear here um, in the way of my, of implant migration is that it would not slip down. It slips down under the muscle and it makes a double bubble um, deformity or bottoming out deformity. We will speak about it um, tomorrow. Um, this is a, so this, this, this is a very strong suture that fixes the, the fold. So the, the implant cannot, you know, uh, slip lower than it should be. So um, I'm suturing, I do usually two or three such uh, uh, stitches, strong stitches. So then I'm completely sure the implant cannot move. Um, after I do my side, uh, the, I mean the assistant side, I will also do the same on on the assistant side. Um, I mean, sorry, on my side. And then, um, as you can see, my the assistant is already packing the, the uh, instruments, already cleaning up a little bit, making everything tidy. Um, and now he will also start to 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 suture to so we we so we finish uh, one side each. After the surgery, um, after this is done, we use uh, usually a special form of uh, of uh, tape. Uh, it's, uh, we use it on the wound for up to one month, and it, it, it's, it's really, really effective to minimize the 
um, scarring. Uh, we will talk about scarring some other time, but you know the the the, the these um, tapes that we use are really really effective. Um, and as I said, we use them we use them we leave them for up to one month on the wound without checking it. Um, after that, we use some um, gauzes, and then we of course put the bra on the on the chest on the breast. Uh, we use special special recovery bras that uh, that uh, are more that do more, more compression and help help also the tissues to heal well uh, to uh, also remove the swelling and they give good support for the for the woman um, so that she doesn't feel the the breast or the pain that much. Um, sometimes uh, the, if the uh, if the the bra is too tight, uh, the pain can be quite bad. So that's one of the mo bigger, I mean, most common uh, um, reasons for post-operative pain is a very tight bra. Um, and uh, otherwise, the pain is quite reasonable with all of these measurements that I spoke uh, about before. So a lot of local anesthesia and, of course, good um, pain-killing regime after surgery. Um, we start with uh, with painkillers uh, during the surgery, and um, and of course we continue after. As you can see, the patient is uh, completely anesthetized. I mean, she's uh, she's in, in a deep sleep. Um, this is the safest way of doing this surgery. Uh, we never do it in local anesthesia because uh, I, I mean uh, there is actually no reason to do it in such a way. Um, this this anesthesia is um, not that deep. I mean, uh, because we are more or less dealing with superficial tissues, we are not entering the, I don't know, stomach or chest. We are staying um, under the skin more or less. So the the uh, anesthesia does not to be very very deep. Also, the patients after this procedure wake up immediately, and um, and they walk out of the operating room by themselves. Look, this is the final check. Or, or I mean the first check as you as you as you um, turn it away, I turn it around. So um, everything is perfect. I'm, I'm removing my my um, surgery gowns. Uh, so my assistant will uh, wash the skin so it's not that uh, brown or whatever color color this is after surgery. And um, this way the surgery is actually finished. You, this was the whole procedure without um, any 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 jumping forward, um, and in cases like 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 her, this is a quite straightforward procedure, um, minimal um, complications, minimal problems, and it's quite quick. As you can see, we are we have been operating for uh, about 22, 23 minutes. Um, Years ago, this was a procedure that took much more time, uh, maybe 45 minutes, even um, up to one hour. But uh, as I said before, uh, the, the, the mileage, so doing this big number of op operations, does really, really um, help to make the procedure quicker, safer, and of course, with less complications. Um, nowadays, uh, complication rate... Um, oh, that was me, you see? Okay, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, so the complication rate after this procedure is extremely low, and we will talk about that tomorrow. So thank you for watching. That's all for today. Please don't forget to follow me, and bye-bye. Uh,